Two-time player of the year, Sean Rash, and Brunswick teammate Chris Lochetter were firing on all cylinders, knocking Mika Koivu Niemi and Mike Fagan out of the championship round in the Geico PBA Summer Shootout. Next up for Brunswick, 900 Global's Missy Parkin and Hall of Famer Brian Voss. Will Brunswick continue to roll all the way to the shootout finals? Welcome back to Chicago and the 2012 Geico PBA Summer Shootout. Lon McCarron along with Randy Peterson inside the 10 Pen Bowling Lounge as our shootout stepladder finals continue. Track took the first match over Columbia, three then lost to third seeded Brunswick. Now in match number three, it's the second seeded 900 global team taking on third seeded Brunswick. So we'll see. Player of the Year, Sean Rash, and his partner, Chris Loeschetter, picking on Missy Parkin, and Hall of Famer, Brian Voss. There is Sean Rash. Rash very strong in the previous victory, and he starts out strong here. A very interesting strategy by 900 Global, Lon. The higher seated team gets to decide who starts the match, which then in turn will determine who finishes the match for their team. As you see, Sean Rash's beautiful strike to start the match for Team Brunswick. Now, 900 Global has decided to let Brian Voss start this match, which means Missy Parkin will finish the 10th frame. Let's see how the strategy pans out. The elder statesman in the competition, 53 year old Brian Voss. At least you didn't call him old. No, I would never do that. Boss's first ball leaves the 10 pin. I guess that. I know. And the first spare attempt. You told me to hit it, and I hit it. Coming up for Brian Voss in this competition. We call that the week 10, where the six pin just kind of goes to the sidewall and lays there kind of DOA like. 900 Global made two of the last three finals in the eliminator rounds, had great momentum coming into the stepladder finals as Boss cleans up the 10 pen. And now Missy Parkin. Parkin has been there just about the whole way for 900 Global, partnering with either Voss or Robert Smith. The first female member of the PBA. Her father also a PBA member. And Parkin with the strike. So far the strategy looks pretty good. She's really found a home on that left lane with that down and in shot right around the second arrow. All right, so as Chris Loeschetter gets ready, here's Parkin's last strike. You should do more of that, Lon. Your scores in bowling would go up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Loeschetter has found a home. His first ball in his stepladder finals, then open frame, and he's been just about perfect since, and there he goes again. I like to refer to him affectionately as the Loesch. <laughs> All right, so a good start for Brunswick. Strike, strike, Sean Rash back on the approach. He came up big time in the 10th frame of their last match when he needed a good mark and count and just threw a dead flush. Kind of like that? Exactly like that. Three in a row for Brunswick. Keeping the heat on. Brian Voss and Missy Parkin. He liked that one. But then he went and sat down. It looked like he had something in his eye. He's working on that right now. But after throwing that ball, why would you change anything? <laughs> even your vision, <laughs> if it's obscured even. All right. Brian Voss once again. Oh. 
This is not the start that Brian Boss wanted. That was a good shot. Ring and 10 as opposed to the flat 10. That could have struck very easily. And Brian looking to double up after Missy's strike. Instead, it's another 10 pin. And clean up on aisle two once again for Brian Voss. Clean up on aisle two? I like that. All right, so another spare for Voss. And see Parkin trying to pick up her partner once again. And no secret why 900 Global chose these two players for the stepladder finals. It's all based on who's throwing the most strikes, and that would be Brian Voss and Missy Parkin. Got to go with the hot hand. The winner of this match takes on top-seeded Storm, Pete Weber, and Jason Belmonte. And Parkin is solid once again. Two spares for Voss, two strikes for Parkin, but it's Brunswick who holds the early advantage in this match. Welcome back to Chicago in the Geico PBA Summer Shootout. He's Randy Peterson. I'm Lon McCarron in the midst of match number three of our stepladder finals. You know, 900 Global made the finals in two of their last three eliminator rounds to earn the second seeding, but they have their hands full against Brunswick here. Yeah, all the momentum is in the corner of Brunswick. Uh, we saw Chris Lowshedder open his very first ball that he threw on television in the stepladder finals, and he hasn't missed since. They also have the reigning player of the year on that team. They've got all the momentum on their side, and they're perfect through three frames in this game. All right, in the lane right now from Team Brunswick is Chris Loeschetter. The Loesch. The Loesch. And boy, what a bounce back, as you mentioned, he has had. They stuck him in the lineup. He opens up, and they all went, ah, what are we doing? Such a good kid and, and such a great bowler. Hard to believe he hasn't won a title yet out here. Yeah, there's that stubborn 10 pin. It's all right, though. Nine spare will work just fine. 900 Global has yet to put back-to-back -to -back strikes together. See this beautiful approach. Nice balance at the foul line, head steady, hand underneath the bowling ball. And a little body English to try to wiggle that 10 pin down. Takes it out, and there is the nine spare for Brunswick and Lowshedder. They hold a 19 pin advantage, still on 900 global. 900, the better seed coming into this match, two against Brunswick's third seed. Now our Current player of the year beat out Mike Fagan and Jason Belmonte in the voting. We'll see Belmo in the next match, the championship match. Rash working on two strikes of his own, but a spare of Lowshedder. There's maximum points for Lowshedder's spare. Pretty solid by Mr. Rash, the reigning player of the year. He is perfect in this match. Nothing but strikes for Sean Rash. Well, Brian Voss, the elder statesman here, voted in the Hall of Fame back in 94, which means he's got a lot of experience to call upon. But to be, uh, be the old guy here, you know, uh, uh, I'm getting used to that, really. It seems like uh, everywhere I go, and. When uh, the qualifying's over with or whatever, we're all standing, and I'm always the oldest guy there. But I, I, I'm proud of that. And the smell of Ben Gay gives it away, too. <laughs> he does have a mixed doubles title. And so he should be a shoe-in to be here in this match with Missy Parkin. And Brian Boss gets his first strike of this match. He's hit the pocket, all three shots that he's thrown. He finally gets the 10 pin out. I've seen that form there win a lot of titles and a lot of money over the years on the PBA Tour. Over the many, many years on the PBA Tour for Brian Voss. What are you trying to say, Lon? 
Not saying he's old. Hey. <laughs> All right, his teammate Misty Parkin. Parkin with two strikes of her own in this match. He doesn't like this one. It's all right. An eight count. Boy, they know right away, don't they? They do. As soon as it leaves your hand, a top-notch player can tell you if it's going to hit the pocket or not. And after throwing two perfect shots, this one here, well, it's pulled left. Almost the big four there for a split second. The 6'10 goes late. Leaves her an easy spare attempt at the 4'7. Park and fortunate just to have those two left. And Park and chopped it. Oh, my. And she opens up here in the sixth. Unbelievable and inexcusable. A very easy spare attempt. Cross lane at the 4-7. She tugs it left again. And Cherry picks the 7 off of the 4. So after that miss by Park and Team Brunswick knows if they can keep their foot on the accelerator, they have a very good chance of moving into the championship match. Here's oh, the Loesch. Uh, it would have been nice to follow up Missy's miss with a strike there. But he avoids the big split, so that's good. A huge opening for Brunswick here. Chuck Gardner, one of the Brain Trust members who put Deloche in the lineup. Right. Another spare for Loeschetter. Well, it's rash time now. He's been pretty much automatic this entire match. Let's see if he can keep his little mini streak alive. Brunswick with a 23 pin advantage right now. I'll go. Mm. He's not happy with it. Yeah, right, he leads on. two. A lot of eight. Well, that's a good eight and a good leave. No split. Easy spare attempt coming up for Sean Rash. Seven pin was standing there for a split second. He's glad it went down. Well, Brunswick not exactly stomping on the accelerator pedal. But Rash does pick up the spare there and keeps their advantage at 21 pins. The old guy, Brian Boss, needs to light a fire under his team in the final frames to try to make their way into the championship. From Chicago, this is the GEICO PBA Summer Shootout. Welcome back to the 2012 GEICO PBA Summer Shootout. From Chicago, we go up to the Sky Deck on the 103rd floor of the Willis Tower in Chicago. It is not for the faint of heart, but you do get a unique view of the Windy City from 1,400 feet high. You can almost see your house from there, Randy. There is the PBA Manufacturers Cup. Just three teams left with a chance to claim that piece of hardware. The only way you're getting me up there is if you give me a parachute. <laughs> I don't care how safe you tell me it is, Lon. I'm not doing it. Brian Voss and 900 Global Trail by 21 pins to Team Brunswick right now. Yeah. A strike for Voss. He's locked in now. After a couple of 10 pins, Brian Voss has found a way to knock all 10 down. That nice direct line straight to the pocket. All Voss's experiences has opened up an avenue to teaching the game to new students. Mostly international teaching. You know, I, I have some appearances here in the States, but, um, you know, I just recently was on a trip in uh, uh, Munich, Germany, uh, Slovenia. Uh, I go to Greece quite often. Uh, Austria, uh, Switzerland a couple of weeks ago. Uh, th there's just uh, a lot of interest in, in, uh, in what I have to offer and, and uh, uh, you know, just, just, just teaching people how to try to beat me. <laughs> well, that's the only thing he's not successful at, I think, teaching people to beat him. Still a very strong bowler. 
is Brian Voss. Now, Missy Parkin, the first female PBA member, as we mentioned, her dad, Frank Belinder, a longtime PBA member. Coming off of an open frame, she needs to get refocused and come back with one of those great strikes she threw earlier in this game. It's getting late, eighth frame. And she leaves a mini split. Run it down. Second consecutive pulled shot for Missy Parkin on that left lane. And 900 Global cannot afford another open frame. So Missy with some work to do to get that spare. Just a reminder, you can find official PBA jerseys, the same ones these competitors wear at PBA.com. Look like the pros, so you can bowl like the pros. Visit PBA.com. Missy Parkins team trailing by 21 at the moment. And she does pick up that spare. Good shot. Good shot. Well, that keeps their hopes alive. If they strike out, they can shoot 216. A little boost to her confidence after chopping a couple of pins earlier. Now, low shutter, eighth frame. Looking to extend the lead for Team Brunswick. The Loesch is strong as usual. Big strike at a big moment for Loeschetter and Brunswick. Sean Rash next to bowl. We asked the 29-year-old player of the year what he has learned over the course of this last year on tour. Well, I've learned a lot. I mean, every time we bowl, you're learning. And uh, whether it's good things or bad things, and I've said it a lot of times that you learn more from failures uh, or things that you didn't do right than you know, winning an event because you're not going to win every single time. And uh, Brian Voss said it a long time ago. He's bowled so many events and he's won 24. And you look at how many times Walter's bowled or Dick's bowled and Pete, Chris, and uh, you know, you got to give yourself a chance to win. And that's the best thing about what I've done this season is I've put myself in a lot of different positions to win, whether it was elimination formats or qualifying or step ladder. And, that's all I can ask for, and uh, I've been very happy with how this season's progressed. Well, I'll tell you one thing. If he didn't win the Tournament of Champions, he would not have been satisfied with the season. He made a boatload of shows, and to come away with no victories this season would have been disappointing for him. You saw his wife, Sarah, looking on, and Rash comes through with the big ball. Big time strike right there in the ninth frame. That increases the lead. And it's not looking good for 900 Global. Sean Rash stepping up big time as the reigning player of the year. His partner already struck in the eighth. He's looking to double up, and he does just that. All right, so sitting comfortably is Brunswick. On the hot seat, Brian Voss and 900 Global. Brian Voss does all that he can do. Thank you. Well, he sets up the 10th frame for Missy Park, and if she strikes out, she will force Chris Loeschetter to mark in the 10th frame. But she has to have all three in the 10th. So a big moment for Missy Park, and who has been front and center for much of this Geico PBA shootout for 900 Global. We talked about it at the start of, the, of this match, the strategy that 900 Global put into place, making Missy Parkin finish the game for this team. She knew what she was in for when they set the lineup. This is what you bowl for. Parkin leaves a big split, and that is the death knell for 900 Global. All done. Brunswick will bowl. Team Storm for the title. Three shots in a row on the left lane for Missy. All three tugged, all three through the nose. Two out of three of them split. Missy Parkin very disappointed with how she finished off here with her shootout performance. Oh. 
Barkin gave it a good kick, but could not bring down the six pin. And that spells the end of the shootout for 900 Global. Brunswick will advance to the finals. Deloche still coming up big. Player of the year, Sean Rash, still bowling like a player of the year. We'll wrap things up from this match in just a moment. Come on back to Chicago. Back inside the 10-pin lounge. Just desserts have just been served to 900 Global. And here is how Brunswick advanced on the Geico Championship recap. Well, it was a little bit of this and a little bit of that and a lot of Loesch throwing strikes. Missy Parkin got off to a great start, but then split two out of her last three shots. And then the big man, player of the year, Sean Rash, finishing it off. That is your Geico Championship recap. One match left. Brunswick, the third seed, will meet top-seeded Storm. That match coming up shortly on ESPN. Randy is with our winners. All right, well, Team Brunswick continues to ride the gravy train with biscuit wheels. Sean, I'll start with you since I dished you last time. How are you guys able to manage not only your games so well, but this oil pattern? Well, you know, the biggest thing is just trusting each other's instincts and moves. And uh, Chris and I have been become great friends over the last couple of years. Our entire team works together constantly on making sure we know how to play every part of the lane. And, uh, you know, Ryan and Chuck sitting back there telling us when to move and what to use. And uh, teamwork is what teamwork is, and that's why we're being successful. Thanks, Sean. Chris, looking ahead now to the title match, one game away from winning this whole thing, but you're taking on a team that's completely dominated this event. How do you get in their heads? Just keep doing what we're doing. We're going pretty good right now, so, uh, you know, Sean's looking real good, and I'm feeling pretty comfortable, so just keep striking, baby. That's it. I like it. Good luck. Can Rash and Lowshedder take out top-seeded Team Storm with Pete Weber and Jason Belmonte? That match is next. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For Andy Peterson, I'm Lon McCarron. We'll crown a champion of the shootout next.